Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I'm Lisa Curcio. Today is January 1st. The year is 2024. Happy New Year. Today, I've got three cards to share with you, two of which I'm going to demonstrate. And of course, the other is a variation. I'm going to teach you different ways to create the faux shutter or called the fractured card layout. And you're going to be amazed at the different ways that you can create this card. Now, as always, you're going to want to stick around for that free project sheet. That's linked down in the video description for you below when tonight's premiere is all over. It's going to contain the pictures, cutting dimensions, and the supplies for all three cards I'm going to share tonight. I also want to make sure that you know that we love to chat with you live. So if you are here for the premiere and would love to chat with us, we are here with you right now in the live chat. YouTube requires that you log into your account using your Gmail address in order to chat or to leave a comment if you're here watching the replay. I come back and I read every single one and I'd love to hear from you. I want to make sure that you know that Gina Hawley is with me in the live chat tonight. You'll see her name in blue off to the side. Gina is my daughter and she's an avid card maker. You are going to know her because she's created videos here with me on YouTube. She's here with me to answer your questions and to provide links for you and we'd love to interact with you. All right, we're ready. Let's get started. I'm going to start the faux shutter fractured card background with Lost Lagoon cardstock. I am going to protect the background of my work surface with one of the small grid papers. I just take the large ones and cut them up. You'll find those papers in my online store and they're under grid sheets. I'm going to use the coordinating ink and this is the beauty of Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. So the ink is going to match the cardstock, the alcohol blends, the markers, the embellishments, and so on. This stamp set is so much fun and it's debuting in just a few days. It's called Trusty Tools. Now I bought it as a bundle, which I think you're going to want to too, because you're going to get the coordinating dies. So the stamps and the dies work beautifully together and you're going to see there's lots of fun pieces in here to make tools with either the dies or to die cut the images that are here. And I love that pegboard. So I've got ahead and I've got my cardstock all cut. And again, you're going to find all those cutting dimensions inside the project sheet. I've mounted the hammer here, so I'm just going to ink it up in the coordinating ink. And we're looking just to create a random background. So I'm just going to make sure I got that inked well now that I'm talking. And we're going to stamp here. And I want to make sure that I have them going in a bunch of different directions because I want this to look more like designer series paper than I do a stamped background. Now here's a tip for you. If you hate getting up and to constantly rinse out your stamp chamois or of course your stamp and scrub, stamp off that excess ink on your scratch paper to get as much off as you can. And then I'm just reaching off camera to clean that. I'm going to move now over to the paint brush and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to ink this up. I'm trying to make sure that my tools are not all going in the same direction because that's going to create some visual interest if they're not. And let's go ahead and stamp another one here. Again, I'm going to stamp off that excess ink. And now I'm moving over to the wrench. We're going to ink that up as well. And we're going to stamp that in here. And this is a great filler. But you know what? I'm not going to go that way. Let's go this way because it's going to be less intuitive to the tool above it. And now we're going to go ahead and place this one here. So you're looking to just create that random look. Don't be afraid to stamp off the edges of your cardstock because you want to make sure that you've got some what looks like designer series paper, like I said. All right, so there we go. We've got this. Now I've got a couple areas there that are blank over now to the tape measure. So it's going to ink that up and we are going to stamp that here. If you get some overlap, don't worry. Now I know there's not a lot of room left, so I'm going to squeeze in my little tape measure areas just a little bit here and a little bit there. And this is where photopolymer is wonderful because you can actually see where you're going. Now that that's finished, I'm going to move that grid paper off to the side. I'm going to set this off to the side as well. Now you're going to need a square. And I varied different sizes when I worked with this technique. This one specifically is two and an eighth by two and an eighth. Two by two works great. And you can even go up to two and a quarter, which you'll see on my other samples. But this is where we're going to add a little bit of detail or the image or the greeting to the card. Now I decided that I wanted to play this up just a little bit. So I brought in some designer series paper that coordinates with that tool set. And here it is. I know it's really simple, but I've got to show you this paper. Now this paper really caught my eye because obviously we call my husband Bob the Builder. The man can build and fix just about anything. So I knew this was going to make some great cards. 
The designer series paper can be fussy cut or the dies fit some of the images, which makes it great. Now let's go through these papers really quick because I think you're going to love them. You're going to notice that these two sheets have different tools on them in different colors, which is really going to expound your use. So there's six different patterns and the best part, are you ready, is that they're double sided. Look at these. Aren't these great? I'm loving the colors. Now here comes the other side. And just in true Stampin' Up! fashion, you're going to have patterns here that you can use all year round. I absolutely love that these are not specifically themed for the tools, which means you're going to use them with other themed cards throughout the year. So I cut a two by two square of that grid and I'm going to add adhesive to what's going to be my wrong side. Now I'm using my silicone craft sheet underneath me because adhesive, liquid glue and hot glue will not stick to it. That is like my best workhorse here in the studio. And I'm looking just to leave that small margin around that square. We're going to attach that here. Now what we're going to do is we are going to flip this over and we're going to add adhesive now to the back side. This now is going to go in the center of here, but you're going to want to put it on the diagonal so that you have a diamond. Where you position this is entirely up to you. And you'll see on my other samples some different variations. I'm going to eye this for the center. Now, of course, you can measure. I'm not going to bother with that. So I'm just looking to see if there's about equal room between here and here and here and here and here and here. And that's pretty close. To create that fractured card look, you're going to need to cut four strips of cardstock. I have experimented with all different colors and I have found for this to really look fractured or to give you that faux shutter look, you're going to need to ultimately have this the same color as the card base. I found that works best, but experiment because you're going to be able to change it up just based on your liking. I'm just going to move these off to the side a little bit with my take your pick tool. That putty tip is wonderful. And I'm going to use liquid glue for this because it's going to give you a little bit of shimmy room, but it's also going to allow you to put glue on those little tiny strips. I'm going to bring in the Precision Glue Press. I love, love, love this tool. It's got a nice hearty tip on it with a needle in here, which means it goes on top of that needle tip here when it's not in use to keep it from drying out. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how simple this is. First of all, this is the palm of my hand. So you can see that it's small. It's not big. I was concerned because my arthritic hands that I wasn't going to be able to pump this. But let me just tell you, you literally have to do this. So there's no pressure in here. So let me just show you. I always like to get the gun started on my craft sheet just to make sure I've got it flowing and just to make sure I don't squeeze too much. Look how tiny I can get that. What you're going to do now is you're going to add a little bit of glue here to the back. And again, the multi-purpose liquid glue that I've put inside this bottle is very, very strong. So you don't need to go crazy. I'm going to start at the very top and I'm going to align that strip to the edge of that white cardstock, making sure that it presses right along the outside of that angle right here. And I may have put a little bit more glue than I need, which is why I love the silicone craft sheet because that's going to protect my work surface. Now, instead of lifting the card, what we're going to do is we are going to pivot the silicone craft sheet. Now, I'm going to move this more to the center so that you could get a better angle. I'm going to take the next one now and we are going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to add a little bit of glue here and then I'm going to butt up to the top of the last strip working along the edge of that diamond to connect these. Now, if you're like me and you didn't put glue all the way where it needs to go, let me just give you a little tip. I am just going to very carefully bend this back, just bowing the cardstock. I am not bending it just to add a little glue with that precision glue press. I love, love, love this tool. You're going to find it linked for you over on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. It's made by the same company as the Misty, which is My Sweet Petunia. Here comes the next one, and I can think you can kind of see where we're going with this. And I'm going to give you some tips about the images, the greeting, and how to adhere all of this. Again, the secret to create that faux look is to make sure that you're butting it up against all the sides. We're going to turn it one more time and we've got our last strip here and we're going to go ahead and add our glue and I'm making sure I put it on a little bit longer this time and again butting it up to the top and along the sides. You want to do your very best to make sure that there are no gaps. Now this glue dries very very quickly but while it's doing that let's talk about this. I never like to put my glue away dirty and gunky so I just pinch it here through my silicone craft sheet. You're going to take that needle tip and I'd like to put my fingers against the cartridge 
And all I'm done is I've just slid the needle tip inside the precision tip of the glue bottle. And you're gonna screw that in place. And I love that it just rests here and I can keep it on my work surface. There is a stopper here. So when you're using the gun, the needle tip comes down inside of there. You can actually see some glued, can you? But it creates almost an airtight seal between the needle tip and the stopper, which allows you to keep this on your work table all day and continue using it. And then of course, when I'm all done at night, I go ahead and I close it up. Now that this has had a few seconds to dry, we're gonna flip this over. I have a pair of scissors here in the studio that I dedicate to those sticky projects. I know I probably got a little excited with the glue. And I'm going to cut from the back side. So you're going to use the card base as a guide so that you get those nice straight edges. And you're going to do this now all the way around. So I'm looking just to make sure it's as even as possible. Now, once those are all finished, we're going to go ahead and start adding this to the card base. And believe it or not, we're almost done. And I can't wait to share with you the other variation we're going to create together. This is gray granite. Five and a half by eight and a half. I scored it in half before you joined me. This is now a good time to make sure those edges are all aligned. I'm gonna use my bone folder to create that nice crisp crease. And I'm going to attach that here. I'm gonna come back to my silicone craft sheet and I'm gonna add adhesive now around the outside perimeter. There's nothing more embarrassing than a card that falls apart when it's been sent. I have difficulty getting things even this way. So I turn it horizontally. This is the crease here and I'm gonna look this way. This is gonna allow me to get a better vantage point so I can get a nice even margin all the way around. And then once you're happy with it, you can press that in place. Let's talk about the image. Now, obviously there are stamps and I wanna show this to you and I love this about the stamp set. This is what we call two-step, which means there's outline images, but there's also fill images for some of those pieces. So if you don't wanna color it in, you don't have to. So this would go on top of here, this here, and etc but I couldn't resist that designer series paper. So I went ahead and I cut out a piece of the designer series paper that I wanted to use. And I used the coordinating die to cut this out. So here is the die for this one. Again, from the designer series paper, so I had to do very little work. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this now upside down and we're gonna grab some dimensionals and we're gonna add those to the back side. I wanna make sure that this is well balanced. So I wanna make sure that these dimensionals are spread out evenly so that my card doesn't sag during mailing. If you're concerned about this area, let's bring in a mini dimensional. And I love that these are already pre-cut for me so I don't have to mess up my scissors. And then we're gonna use that paper piercing tool attachment on the back side of that tool to remove those papers. I'm gonna add a greeting to this. So I'm gonna work this more towards the top of this diamond shape. I'm going to come in now with my Misty, and since this is a photopolymer stamp, we're going to keep that black foam mat here, and I'm going to add my cardstock here. Very strong magnet. I'm going to anchor that there, and from that same stamp set, I took out the word thank you. So I'm going to position that on my paper where I want it, and then I'm going to close the hinge and rub, and it's going to pick up the stamp. All I have to do now is come in with my ink pad. Now, I love this stamp positioner because this hinge is nice and flat. So all I have to do is come in and ink it up, and then I can come over and close the door, and I can stamp. But I can see already that I've got an area here. I hope it's going to pick up on camera. Do you see how the K and the U don't look really, really strong? So there might be residual ink here. We can try to press it out. Make sure that your cardstock is down in the right corner so that it's going to align perfectly. And yeah, I need a little bit more ink. So I probably didn't ink it well. We're gonna ink it back up once again. And I love this if you want more of a really distinguished color. Again, making sure it's in your corner and then we're gonna press. Look at that, so much better. I've got my microfiber cloth here. I've got a little water on it. We're gonna clean off the stamp. I have this and the Misty also linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. These are not Stampin' Up! products, but they work fantastic with our Stampin' Up! things. Let's go ahead and let's take this greeting now. And what I did is I a fussy cut it because there's actually no die to cut out the greeting. Now, of course, you can go ahead and you can use a label if you'd like. But a lot of you tell me you're intimidated by fussy cutting. So we're going to do a little bit of this together. I do have one that's already done. So I'm going to let the cardstock do the work for me. So I'm starting here. Do you see how I'm wiggling the paper to go around the letters? Make sure you leave some white around the stamped image, whether it's a greeting or, of course, if it's an image itself. 
that's going to lend credence now to how it's going to look and you won't distort the image. Here's the one I have finished for you. We're going to turn that upside down and that's going to be really small. So we're going to use those mini dimensionals to our advantage again. Please be sure that they are well balanced so that your card holds up well during mailing. Your cards go through a mail meter at the post office that has rollers in it. So if you're not careful to balance those out well, your card will come up all lopsided on the other side. Now that those are removed, we've saved some room here and we are going to attach this here. Super duper easy card layout, isn't it? But wait till you see what else you can do with it. This next card uses a celebration stamp set called Watercolor Melon. Now, I love watermelon. It's one of my favorite fruits. But I thought this is easy because all you have to do is use colored ink. This stamp set cannot be purchased. It is a free selection during celebration, which means when you spend $50, you can choose any level one product in that little brochure of your choice. And this was one of my selections. Now, here is the card that I made. I used the Glorious Gingham Designer Series paper instead of the stamped background. So I didn't stamp anything. I had Designer Series paper here. I also want to call your attention to this. There is a stitched square here that I turned on the diagonal. That is from the Stylus Shapes dies. And then I just cut a layer for the whites to create some separation. Again, black card base, black fracture, which really creates that broken look. Very simple stamping here. And this time I chose to put the greeting here at the bottom. But I want to demonstrate this last technique for you. Now for this card, we are actually going to start with the stamping because I want to teach you something really cool that you can do. And I am using the Painted Lavender Bundle stamp set and coordinating dies. Remember when you buy as a bundle, you'll save 10%. You will definitely want one with the other. This has the most amazing, gorgeous suite of products. And I can't wait to share those with you. But we're going to do a technique with these images. This is the Perennial Lavender Designer Series paper. And it is as gorgeous as it looks. Let me show you the papers. So here's one and here is another. Aren't these just stunning? Pretty, pretty, pretty. And like I said before, double-sided, which means you're gonna have a lot of fun with these, even if you don't want those large perennial patterns. So we've got patterns here that you can use all year round. Now that designer series paper is gonna be the start of the show for this next card. We're gonna to come to the technique first. And I've got a piece of scrap white cardstock and I'm putting it back inside my Misty. Again, I'm going to anchor it down. This time I've pulled out the large lavender blooms from that stamp set. And I'm going to put that here. Now remember, there's a die, so I don't have to have perfect positioning here. But I'm going to teach you a technique. Once again, we are picking up the stamp. This is a brand new stamp, which means the photopolymer is still sticky. So whenever it lifts your paper, just put it back in the corner. We are going to start with Highland Heather ink. I've got my ink pad here and we are going to lay that nice and flat and we are going to ink this up and then we're going to close that. Don't even worry about pressing hard. We've got our image, but now what we're going to do is we're going to change things up a bit. I'm cleaning off my stamp to make sure that it doesn't have any residual ink because you're not going to want to transfer that to any other color that you're going to be using. Now that I know that this is good and clean, I'm going to come in with the gorgeous grape ink pad. Now this is a lot darker than the original Highland Heather, but this time I don't want to put it just everywhere. You'll notice that one end of this ink pad is shallower to the edge than the other because this is intended for your fingers. So I'm just going to kind of come in here and I'm just going to kind of tamp it a little bit here and a little bit there. But I was worried that it was going to be too strong. So I'm going to lay my grid paper here first and I'm going to stamp off a little bit to kind of reduce that color and then I'm going to put it here over the top. Now that in itself is really pretty because you can see that there's lighter and darker areas, but we're going to change this up one more time. Let's close this up. Let's clean off our stamp. And this time we're going to come over to Berry Burst. Again, very highly pigmented. I'm turning it this way. Now remember this is a mirrored image so that what is here is actually going to be the opposite here. So I'm going to try to add some color here, which would be this petal here. So I'm just going to kind of tap a little bit here and a little bit there. How much you put is entirely up to you. I'm going to close this once again, and I'm going to stamp off because I don't want it to be too, too dark and overpower the image. And then we're going to come inside of here and we are going to press. 
Do you see how there's ink here on the glass? This is one thing about the Misty that I absolutely love. You don't have to worry about it because it's shallower than the image. Now that picked up my image a little bit too much, so I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna rub a little bit more of that color out. And this is the beauty of the Misty, is I'm able to add color on top of color on top of color. Now, as you can see, we've got areas that are darker and lighter than others, and that's what we're looking for. I went ahead and I used the dies beforehand, and I put this together, because this is really pretty simple now that we've got our stamping done. Look at that, isn't that stunning? So I stamped the stems, which are here, and I die cut them, and I attach them with a little bit of liquid glue. Here on the back, that's designer series paper. So all I did was I die cut two of these long leaves here, and I just glued them to the back side. Add a little bit of a double bow using some linen thread, and now let's teach you a different technique to make this card. This time, not only are we gonna do it different, we're gonna change the orientation, so it's going to be horizontal. And very much like we've done before, you're gonna to want to have a square to turn onto the diamond. Because of the size of my image, I made this two and a quarter by two and a quarter. So let's go ahead and start by attaching this. So I'm gonna add adhesive now to the back side. One thing you need to know is it doesn't have to go in the center. In fact, I chose to put it off center. So I'm looking here and again, I'm just doing my very best to look at the top and the bottom to create equal margins. Now you don't wanna make it too shallow that you can't create the fractures. You've gotta have some space here and then we're gonna attach that in place. I'm gonna put that back on top here on my silicone craft sheet, just like we've done before, and we are gonna add the fractures next. This time, my card base is going to be Gorgeous Grape. My strips are gonna be the same color, and just like we've done before, we are gonna add some liquid glue to here. Now, you're gonna probably need a little bit more glue than you have in the past, because you can see how long this angle is on the left side. Starting here at the top right, we are going to align the top of the strip to the edge of the white cardstock, working all the way across. Now, just like before, we are going to turn the silicone craft sheet. Again, this is a short area, so you probably don't need a whole lot of glue. And then we are going to attach this one here. Make sure they're butt up against each other like we did before. Turning the silicone craft sheet once again, you can see the angle now is getting a lot longer. Now inside the project sheet I have for you, I have all the cutting dimensions. I'm gonna tell you to experiment. There's really no right or wrong way to do this card layout. And I think you're gonna really enjoy the variations that you can personally come up with. Let's go ahead and turn that one more time and then we're going to finish. The best thing about this layout is I wanna make sure that when you create that fractured look, you're always starting from the top down. Now, I wanna point this out to you. Do you see how there's a gap right here? That is because this is probably not a, an identical square. None of us cuts perfectly. There's a couple things you can do. Before the glue dries, you can lift this and reposition it. But the good news on this card is we're not going to have to, and I'm gonna show you why. So let's come back here now that this has had time to dry. I've got my sticky scissors once again, and we're gonna follow that edge of that designer series paper, and we're gonna cut off the excess. Make sure if your designer series paper has a direction like this one that you're working in the right format. I have found that a three by three square works well for this. This just happened to be a scrap, so I just grabbed it. But this is what we're gonna to use to create opposite corners. So you can see that this is gonna fit well here, isn't it? The easiest thing to do is to lay your liquid glue within the perimeter of where you want it. Don't work too close to the edges of that cardstock strip where the fracture is, otherwise it's gonna ooze all over the place. And once you're happy, we're gonna press that in place. Give that a couple seconds to dry. Once it's dried, we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna use the exact same concept. So we're just gonna take our time, we're gonna cut right along the designer series paper. Don't cut all the way through, because depending on where you put the diamond, you might be able to use this excess for another section. In my case, I'm gonna come up here and see if it's gonna fit. Oh, look at that, it sure does. That means I don't have to waste any more paper. My only concern was that it covered the top and you can see that it does. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna come up here and we're gonna add our liquid glue once again. We're gonna slip our paper into that fracture. So you wanna make sure that's all the way up against the edges. Give that a few seconds to dry. We're gonna flip that over and then now we're gonna trim again. Now that this is finished, our next step is to add it to the card base. And like I told you, it was gorgeous grape. We're gonna fold that in half, match up our ends, and then just crease with the bone folder. And again, this is going horizontally. 
So we're going to add our adhesive. This now will get centered here. Two more steps. Remember that beautiful bouquet? And this is where you can hide your boo-boos. Don't think because your card isn't perfect, you have to throw it away. There's usually always a way to camouflage an error. We're going to elevate this though, because I thought this looked really, really neat. Now you're going to notice here at the bottom, it's going to be too tall. So we're going to have to navigate this. And of course, we want to kind of hide that little mistake there, right? And I think by elevating it, that's going to help. But we also have an issue here with the angle. I tried cutting it beforehand and it didn't work. So we're going to do it once it's elevated. So we're going to work from here up with the dimensionals. Now the dimensionals are going to play a twofold here. Not only are they going to elevate it, but it's also going to help to secure all those little loose pieces. Make sure that you're placing them in a solid area that won't be seen from the front. Once you have those in place, go ahead and hold that cardstock down and remove those backings. Now take our image now and we are going to position this so that you are not going to be able to see that fracture mistake. Remember that your envelope has a little bit of grace, so it's a little bit bigger than the actual card itself. So I'm going to tack this here. Now I found it easier for me to trim. I'm going to come in with my paper snips. I'm going to work very, very carefully and I'm looking for the cardstock here underneath me. Don't think it has to be perfect. You just want a similar angle. Now that looks really good, but we're going to cut off that little piece that's right here on the edge because I don't want that to show. And you can see there's no adhesive there. So we're going to do a little bit of card surgery. So we're going to take one of the mini dimensionals and we're going to remove that paper backing right here while it's on the paper. We're going to pick that up with your take your pick tool and you are very carefully going to lift this and tuck this underneath. It needs bling, doesn't it? And that's where these gorgeous brand new purple fine shimmer gems come into play, all part of that magnificent suite. There's a myriad of colors here, which is how I chose the colors for this image. So you can mix and match if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use one of these larger purple ones. I'm going to bring your eye down to here. Then we're going to use a couple smaller ones. I'm going to place one here and I like a diagonal to kind of drag your eye up and across. Okay, we're going to give those a really good push because they have glue dots already on the back. So different designer series papers, fun way to use those. Of course, all designer series paper, fractured. And of course, our first one where we stamped our background and kept it very, very simple. As always, I love to know your favorite. Pop down right now in the comments. Are you going to make the one that has a stamp background? Designer series paper, are you going to mix and match those designer papers for a really beautiful layout? Now, I want to make sure you know all about this. Stamp Studio Memberships. If you're looking for fresh ideas not seen anywhere else, I've got you covered. I designed a specific project for this Stamp Studio Membership. The email tutorial comes right to your inbox every single Monday. You'll see there's two levels here on the screen to choose from, so you can take your pick. You'll get all the information over on my website under Memberships. And this is also a super exciting time of the year because there's a brand new mini catalog that's debuting on January 4th, so just in a few days. It's loaded with brand new stamps, designer series papers, embossing folders, dies, and embellishments. Head over to my website and learn how you can get your copy. And better yet, if you're like me and you love a sale, January 4th begins Stampin' Up's largest sale of the year called Celebration. Celebration is going to give you an opportunity to earn any product of your choice from that special brochure for free with a $50 product order. And if you're thinking of joining the Stampin' Up! family, now would be a great time because there's an amazing incentive on the back page of that brochure. So beginning on January 4th, you'll be able to find these publications over on my website or right now you can go over to my website and click on shop and learn how to get your copies. Thank you so much for being here and have a great day.